Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today I'm doing my first impressions on Season 1 of The First Descendant. Starting off with the story, you know, there's a couple of easy let-ins to the missions. I think the first mission you can do on any difficulty, and then the second mission is just a hard infiltration. But the third mission on this story mode is absolutely completely out of I'm just saying. Uh, so there's like a number of puzzles you need to do where you have to stand on a panel and then once it changes color you need to to do three of them to match uh, this panels on a wall uh that takes down the door but then there's a load of enemies and you know like the first one is fine but then the second one the room's much bigger and then they also can destroy the panels which then changes the panel layout so then you need to go back and check it and this took me way too long and then to fight the boss you need to stand on the panel to uh, essentially break his shield and then then destroy another shield then to damage the boss and the boss is extremely uh, he's rage inducing now let me tell you that I've seen someone quit because of it so um, from that you do another easiest mission where you basically do like simple infiltrations on the open world uh, five times and then you get into the invasion stuff where basically the bad guys are invading and certain zones for a certain amount of hours are now invaded and you basically enter into two different game modes where you can do the standard info operation on hard mode and then there's a, an invasion mode where you um have to beat the mode in like five minutes to get like bonus rewards uh it's very difficult i i am i, I am getting absolutely destroyed i pretty much quit the game after i got ultimate bunny and hadn't really played it much, so it is, this definitely feels like, hey, we're going to reward the people who have been playing for a little while, at least have, like, endgame builds and stuff. There's, like, one boss I haven't defeated on the um, Void bosses I haven't defeated. I think there might be a newer one now. But I'm, I'm basically up the, the last fiery boss, Turtle Fortress, Molten Fortress, that's it. And, um, yeah, I just keep dying to this electric build. So, uh, yeah, uh, they have, like, special perks where this one is you can't regenerate your shield. So as soon as your shield's gone, that's it. No regeneration. I even tried it with a bunny build where if I run around, it regenerates shields. But no, no regeneration shield. So I had to change it out and added a socket or added a module, which basically increased my health but got rid of my shield because, you know, I couldn't use my shield anymore. Okay, moving on to some other new things I've noticed. Uh, they've changed some of the designs for the uh, reactors and stuff. Um, now, if a, a reactors come in different shapes now as well, so, oh, it's okay, I guess. Um, but now for your components, uh, they they've changed some of the f designs of the components. But uh, mainly, if there's like a weird circuit panel on the component, that basically means it's part of a set. So obviously it's slightly where I am more useful. Um, in terms of modules, uh, they've now introduced the ability to uh, have one socket be multiple types of sockets. So um, in the game later on, you discover that each module has like a, a certain symbol on it. And obviously if you have that uh, module matched with a socket type with that same symbol, it decreases the cost, but there are some modules out there that actually give you more modules and that would also give you more if you put it in the right one. So the ability to like change, I think they have like at the moment two. So you can have two different types of modules in one socket. That's quite nice. I mean, module types in one socket. So you can do a lot. It's a lot more flexible. Also made it a bit more confusing when I started getting back into it, but you know I like that flexibility, and I think that's a massive, big improvement. Speaking of new stuff, there's the inversion reinforcement, which is basically, I guess, the season's gimmick where you have like different stat bonuses, you can based on attacking, defense, healing, whatever. I've only managed to get the first one because in order to get later ones, you need to do a lot of invasion stuff. And uh, yeah, I've, like I said, I've been struggling with that because um, I don't really have an end game uh, descendant. Like literally, my uh, ultimate Bonnie is very new. I actually, luckily, they've given you some 
bonus CXP uh, now. So if you do like daily quests, you can get bonus CXP, which basically means you can level up faster, which is nice. But yeah, they have this new inversion reinforcement thing, which is basically like extra stats and they have like negative stuff and you got to balance it out. Fairly interesting. You can have a look on the screen. I haven't been able to explore it too much. So overall, my first impressions of the Season 1 stuff is it's definitely catered towards endgame or, you know, endgame builds and stuff. Uh, these new invasion dungeon commando things are definitely designed for you. Oh, uh, we're going to give you a um, certain hindrance and you've got to try and overcome that. So, you know, get ready to flex C, uh, move modules around, try and counter that. Overall, it's... It's fun, it's just more first descendant um stories par for the course. The new inversion reinforcement thing looks interesting. I early using it hasn't really affected gameplay too much, but later on there's probably gonna be some interesting builds around it. Overall, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys on the next one. And goodbye. Morse. Marvelous. Together on the track. Let's go. Red sus, red sus. Red sus, red sus. Red sus, red sus. Red sus, sus. Red sus, red sus. Red sus, red sus. Red sus, red sus. Red sus, sus.